Okay. Hello. I hey, think everybody. I'm on. Hey. Hey. hey, everybody. I'm on today with Mario McCracken, and he is uh, amazing. I I uh, I want to I want to talk to him a little bit about his whole learning journey. And if anybody who's watching now knows about his learning journey and see kind of what he does, I I want to talk more about that process <laughs> of his learning journey. Uh, but before that, though, I want to just you know see how everything's going. So what are you up to? Anything new and exciting in your universe? <sighs> Shoot, always. There's always cool stuff going on, right? Of course. It, it's always the the hardest part is actually doing not enough. Is is taking the time to to relax and not do too much. I mean, right. So there's always something going on, right? You have kids, so there's always stuff going on there. You could always spend an infinity amount of time doing <laughs> stuff with your kids, right? And then at the same time, there's always work. So that's good though. That's nice. Uh, to what I, no, I was gonna say what I love is the is I, what I was saying for those who maybe have just like read tons of Mario stuff. I've had him on my podcast. We've spoken at least two other times besides that, I don't know. And and we're always on here. And this is the first time I've actually seen his lovely face, <laughs> except for that little picture, the little um, image that's it on LinkedIn. So I think it's kind of cool that I'm try, I'm right now I'm pulling up to see if anybody's even in there in the universe watching us or knowing we're here. Um, yeah, we're real people, huh? Real people. Oh God. Like real people with like a messy office and a dog who keeps wanting to get into my office when I'm doing lives. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, yeah. Um, so you, I, so exciting stuff for me. I think you saw the book. Uh, and that was yeah, really I'm so cool. excited. Like, talk, talk to me about that. Actually. I just signed, I just signed uh, the contract Sunday and of course you're going to be in it. And like all the people that are from the, the first 100 people from my podcast will make their way one way or another inside of that, uh, inside the book. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to merge the, all of the knowledge that I've gained from uh, the employee experience work. So the voice of the employee work I've done in employee engagement surveys, reading all the comments, doing the focus groups and kind of, you know, like synthesizing as I did kind of in the first book, but now it's taking what employees uh, want and need and and merging it with leaders who are trying every day to meet those needs. So yeah. they're more emotionally intelligent, those people like you that were on the show or on my podcast. Um, but then like uncovering inside of that, that's kind of more of this complexity that it's not just that simple, that there are a lot of leaders that kind of fall off the wagon when it comes to emotional intelligence and what happens when they do that. And then what do they do to kind of get back on track? So that'll yeah. be really what the focus of the book is going to be about and revealing those stories, uncovering it and, and boiling up some key lessons around that. Um, awesome. And the title right now is called the caring leader. I don't know okay. what that, that's what it's going to be because after they do market research and stuff, they might say, no, no not that title. Yeah, um, yeah. I tried to make it go the leadership of the heart route. And they were like, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling that. So, uh, so that's what it is right now. It's the caring leader, uh, 10, 10, 10 ways to love your people and make everything work in your team and your organization. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Title. Yeah, it sounds so, incredible. We'll see. I'm going to be like, you'll, you'll be getting it. You'll be getting a copy, you know, <laughs> as the avid reader that you are. So, um, let me just see if there's anybody joining us. Cause it just, you never know the time of day who might be joining, who can or can't join. So let's just see. Uh -uh. I'm not sure. Okay. Sometimes it shows up just really nicely for me where it's live and then sometimes not so much. Um, okay, there we go. Good. I want to make sure I'm, when people are joining, I can say hello. Oh, yes. Okay, Sam. Okay, Sam. Sam, hello there. Oh, wait. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Laquita. Hello there. She says hi to both of us. Hi. So everybody who's on there, definitely make sure you say who, who is out there because we want to know who's out there in the universe because we'd like to talk to you and ask questions too while we're sitting here um, and making sure that uh, that we are again engaging with you and know what's going on. So I have, and hey there, Paul. Hey, Paul Harry's on there too. Oh, cool. Great saying hello there. Um, so I wanted to be talking tomorrow. Everybody knows you as someone who's a learner, a lifelong learner, someone who reads a gazillion books more than we can. So we like follow the books you're reading so that we can make sure that we're trying to, you know, get a hold of those as well. And uh, and I know you have a pretty big following on your email list. Like you really, somebody, people are really watching you. And I always tell people, you know, with leadership, I talk about this a lot. People are always watching and you get to choose what it is they see, right? <laughs> it's true. Right? For right? sure. Yeah. So I think what I see in you is a lifelong learner. And of course, so Mario, uh, Mario McCracken, he was on episode 35 of the Leadership with Heart podcast. And um, and that was awesome. So definitely go check him out either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you might listen. 
Uh, but now we're going to talk a little about that. So what is it like? How do you even determine which books you're going to read? Because uh, there's a really, how do you, how many have you read actually? And you're like, just in your lifetime. Many books you've oh, read? shoot. That's, um, yeah, that's going to be tough to pin down exactly how many I read. I've only started keeping track of the number of books I read maybe since 2011, maybe. So since 2011, you can say about a hundred books a year. So oh, nine, yeah. nine years, I guess, or so. So, oh my goodness! Maybe, That's a maybe, lot of books. Yeah, so about that, about that many. So, so I think you're kind of a pretty good judge of like what's what's good, what's junk, what's in between. <laughs> I'm getting better, yeah. And lots of times now, I'll I'll do a I'll read the first chapter and the last chapter, and if it's good, if that's really good, then I'll read the book. So then that'll determine if it goes into my read pile. Ah. Um, so that's how I kind of judge the character of a book first. But that's only with, with business style books. With 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 nonfiction, I try to read uh, like a novel or an adventure, or fantasy, or biography in between the business books. So those hundred, it's not hundred business books. It'll be like maybe fifty business books, you know, yes. and fifty nonfiction. I'll try to alternate every other, um, and then all, those I just read from start to finish, no matter what. Even if I don't like it, I'll finish the book because it's wow. a fiction. So it's a it's different than a business book. Where a business book, you can tell right away if it's going to be good or not, just from the first couple chapters or the first and last chapter. But fiction books, sometimes it takes a while to get going, but I'm always glad I read the fiction books, whereas there's lots of business books I've read where I'm like, I'm not glad after I read them. Like, ah, that was a waste of time. So, Where do you find time for this? I mean, because I know you have at least two children, right? Uh, yeah, at yes. least two, up to four. <laughs> exactly, up to four. Yeah, exactly. So I have four kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both, I forgot if we both have, we both have four. <laughs> and I have four, and I don't know how you do it. Like, my husband does uh, a lot of audiobooks, like two yeah, yeah. kids oh, are for listening sure. in, yeah. in the car, they're, they're listening. Uh, yeah. I, knew, I, I knew this next time around, because my first book, I didn't do an audiobook, but I told myself, this time, it's going to be an audiobook, because I know that people are like me, where they just, they, having that time to sit and read it in, in bed, or yeah, wherever yeah. they're at, it's just not something to do, so when do you have time to do that? Well, so actually, I'd say over 70% of the books now I read are on audiobook. Okay. I'd say now, is, now that they are. is that on commute, mostly? Yeah, I travel a lot on airplanes. And so rather than some people get busy and actually work on the plane or other people just sleep, I figure I'd do a mix kind of a both where I, I, I'm relaxing, but I'm still learning. So I'm, I'm, I just listen to books the whole time. And then when every time I work out and then audiobooks are great because you can listen at two speed and still understand everything at double speed. So, yeah, it takes and then novels I usually listen to at 2.5 speed. So you get those through pretty quick. But business wow. books, I listen to a little slower. And so that's how you get through a lot of books really quick without actually spending tons of time. And then. When it's really, really important, I really want to learn something, I'll go back and buy the physical copy and then I'll highlight it and then I'll use it as a study material. But most books aren't, I wouldn't say most books are good enough to actually study them, wow. but lots of them are. And so those are the ones you go back and reread physically. Wow, that's like, that's a whole, you guys listen to this, this is like a whole process. And I, and I think too that it says, I think you're a pretty bright person there, Mario, because to be able to listen at that speed, like I, it takes me a while to process. Like, so I have to hear the words, it settles in, you know, into what's going on. And I just think it would be hard to take that in at that speed. And while you're working out and you're doing mul that whole multitasking and they say we really aren't good at doing more than two things at one time. And then when you're speeding up, it's like you're doing three or four things at one time. It it's still only doing one thing at the same time, one physical thing, right? Like I'm not, I'm not trying to cook and lift weights at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so like this idea of lifelong learning it's a thing yeah. it's a it's a message that pops up it's like the underlying message inside yeah. of the podcast which obviously will be that underlying message inside the book and it is for from the leader's perspective we are always evolving yeah. and always learning from others around us we are never too good or you know and think we know everything uh, that we aren't going to try to do that and and I don't it's not that I don't I'm not reading tons of books like you because I don't I think I know it all holy smokes no I realize every day no it it just it's just finding the time but now that you say it the way you do like I I know that I'm more successful when I do the audio side and I now I'm going to try to speed that up because yeah, it's just yeah. uh, maybe that'll be something that'll be the game changer for me <laughs> uh, right now I mean even doing you know, like doing this I try I for for a long while with these lives. I would try to put out a notice ahead of time saying for, so that people know I'm actually going to have people on the show. Yeah. And, and that's a hit or miss with me. I got to, my process is not super strong in that regard uh, because it's uh, having the time. That's just one more thing that I have to go do. And sometimes my assistants where they don't have the time. And so I'm like, okay, well, I guess we have to do something else. So yeah. now it's, now it's just you and I, babe, you and I. Let's yeah. see else there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, liquidity says need to stop thinking that listening to audiobooks isn't reading. 
Oh gosh. For sure. Yeah, yeah Paul. Yeah, Paul. Two point five. Yeah, holy cow is what he says. Two point five speed. <laughs> what kind of brain? I'm like thinking the brain there. Um, well, what they do when they speed it up, the words don't come out much faster. Actually, what they're doing is erasing the space between the words. So you're not like hearing the words super jumbled. The words are still pretty clear. It's just there's not spacing. So you don't get the intonations as well or the tone or the emotion mm -hmm. as well, but you still get the content, which okay. some people don't like it. Some people do. But I found that it there's different. Everybody's a different type of learner. Some people, they're physical or kinesthetic learners. They have to physically do something and then they learn it. Other, uh, other people have to say it themselves before they learn it. Other people have to write it down, right? Other people have to physically read it. I'm an auditory learner, so I learn better by listening than I would if I took notes myself. Mm. So everybody has different learning style, right? And so mm -hmm. since I learned, since I like to learn and I liked, I learned what my learning style was, then it makes it easy to kind of create a program. And I'm not good with processes or programs either. My personality is to be, to be the opposite of that. Just take everything as it comes. But I learned that processes really, really help me because I'm not process oriented. I need processes mm -hmm. to get some kind of control in my life. And so then by creating processes, even though I don't like them, I realize that they're a big benefit for me. Well, especially in the sales leadership role. I mean, yeah, process sure. like everything. I mean, I don't know if it's salesforce.com or whatever you use, but you're, you know, people have to input at a certain time. They got to make sure they're for the follow-up task. They have to put their notes. The pipeline has to be up to date, right? There's all kinds yeah. of stuff that happen in your sales sure. leadership role. But you probably also have someone who helps, I bet you, that, that assists to make sure your process stays strong. I, is it just oh, you? Yeah. Getting that? Yeah. No, exactly. I talked to, talk to a lot of different people, but there's also lots of people that can support and help with the processes for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So what, uh, what what are you reading right now? I'm curious. So I got a couple books I'm reading, actually. <laughs> um, I'm reading The Intentional Sales Manager. So yeah, Okay. All right. Um, and then this guy from Italy, he's he just published a book with Kogan Page called Create Uniqueness. It's basically a book about mm. turning your passion into a business. So, um, mm. yeah, this, those, those are the two books I read. So how I choose my books – it used to be I would just go with whatever was popular at the time. That was five, six years ago. Whatever was most popular, I felt like I was missing out, like FOMO. I felt like if I didn't read what everybody else was reading, I would be behind the eight ball, right? Yes. But then once I got caught up to the point where I wanted – then I, I started picking of what I wanted to learn. So about half the books are about stuff that I want to choose. And the other half now, people reach out to me and say, hey, will you read my book? Or, or publishers of book companies will say, hey, will you read the book? And so I'll say, sure. So now about half the books I read, people ask me to read them. And the other half I pick and choose. So I'm a little more selective with those ones for sure. Oh, that's a, that's a great one. Yeah, being an avid reader, that would be someone, they, and they know, an avid reader who also puts it out there in the social space makes total sense that people reach out to you and say, can you read this? I mean, I think, yeah, did yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if I did that with you, but it doesn't matter because you, you'll be get, you'll be in the no, book. And I, read, you'll be I read your book first. <laughs> you'll, like, you'll, be getting, you'll be getting a copy of this because you're going to be in the book. So you better make sure you talk about it. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So Sam says, so does Mario do read, read fiction? Does, do you think that reading fiction helped you with outside ideas? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And reading fiction, they say it helps you with empathy. And I really believe that. They say it helps you be a better leader and stuff. And I don't know if it's helped me. Like you can't measure if you're better or not all the time. Right. But I do feel like it gives my brain a rest and I feel like I can connect with people. But I've always read fiction. So I don't know if it's changed too much. But I do like reading fiction a lot. I'm reading um, Michael Sullivan's, the fourth book in, what's the name of the series called actually? I can't even remember the name of the series. Um, he's written tons of books. He's a fantasy writer. Oh. Anyway, Michael Sullivan, um, the la the legend of, let me see, I have it in my, let me oh, your see. phone, right? Yeah, yeah let, exactly. me, let me just check what, what's, what's the fiction I'm reading today. It's called Age of Legend. Yeah, so Age of Legend by Michael Sullivan. And it's the fourth book in this new series. He has a whole other series that I really like too that I finished. But Age of Legend is a really good book so far. Now, one of the things that I have found uh, when I do my reading consistently is that it they, they say that what you read today walks and talks to you tomorrow, right? Do you feel like when you're reading that you change up just like how you're talking to your team, how do you talk to your customers, how do you talk to your manager? Do you feel like you know, it really has a big impact on just how you show up every day? Oh, for sure. Because you learn stuff all the time, but how do you remember it, right? And so by constantly reading stuff, especially business books, as you read something and then a week later, that exact situation that you read about happens. 
so then you can say, oh, yeah, they said if this and this happened, then maybe this is a better response. Or when this and this happens, you do this. And so if you just read it once, you're not going to remember to do it every single time because there's too much stuff out there. Even when you read a book, there's 100 ideas. You're going to remember one or two of them, right? Exactly. Oh, now Rich Gasson joined us. What do you say, Rich? Uh, everybody has a different learning style spot on Mario. This is uh, critical for leaders to be aware of, especially when you're trying to convey messages and initiatives to a group. Written word along with other ways of sharing information are important. Thanks for getting together. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. I yeah, wanted to do sure. that. Like, it, just one those, it's, it was one of those things that keeps speaking to me every time you would post something or you you'd talk about these different books you're doing. And I know, Rich, you're actually getting to that. So he's been reading and doing more and some posting of some book reviews he's been doing, which I thought has been cool. Yeah. Um, and so I think people like you make people like me who keep forgetting that we need to be reading the things we're writing or write that kind of thing that we need to be also reading and reading lots of um, diverse stuff. My husband, every day he gets the Wall Street Journal and he will highlight articles that are specific in like an area he knows that I need to really I should focus on or, or that's interesting, something about workplace. Um, but he reads every so many different things and so many different magazines from different genres that he can be in a meeting and the level of effectiveness he can have with any kind of personality at a, at a social or anything is crazy because he reads just so many different types of things. Yeah. Uh, not just work, not just business or finance, for example, might yeah, yeah. area. He reads other things. Um, and so I'm trying, I, I'm not going to quite reach that level and probably never reach <laughs> your level either. Um, but I think that getting, just being smarter about how I'm doing it and when I'm doing it. And I'm in that car more than enough schlepping kids or doing whatever. <laughs> and so, for sure. We need to be educating ourselves at the same time. Yeah. I just definitely. downloaded a couple new ones. Uh, just recently, I was at a National Speaker Association conference, and one of the books was, um, oh, no, I'm going to, what is that book? I just downloaded it, too. So, look, you'd be proud of me. I actually nice. have stuff in my thing that I downloaded. And I started to, <laughs> one was an ebook, and one was audio. Um, so, one was called The Wealthy Speaker. I know that. That's okay. when I started to read that was, a, that was an ebook. E and nice. then there's. There's this other one, which I'm super excited to read, but at that, that particular day, I couldn't do audio, so I needed to just be able to sit and listen. Where are you? It's not Friction. Friction was another good one. Um, wait, I don't know where to find it. Okay, when I find it, I will post it inside of the comments, because for some reason, I cannot see it. Oh, there it goes. Iconic. Have you heard of that? Iconic no, by that... Scott McCain. No, I haven't read that one. I heard about it, huh? Someone was talking about it, and when they were talking about it, it was um, it was really about differentiation. So I think that worked well as a sales leader, yeah. uh, figuring out how you know you differentiate you as the person who's actually building the relationship because it's not the product that sells it's the people, the relationships that sell the product, right? And so it was kind of like how do you differentiate you? How do you, you know, those types of things? So okay. I. I Iconic is what it's called. Oh, that sounds so, really interesting. I'm gonna definitely <laughs> add it to the list. Know, any, any kind of title like that, I'm like, oh, I want to have a title that sounds like that, like um, <laughs> drive and like. Yeah. There's some of these ones that are just like one word. You're like, oh, that's just powerful. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> now it's interesting as an author um, working on the process of books is uh, it depends. Like that, like so. The first book I was doing it. I did a lot of the writing uh, as part of blogs that I compiled and then like another half of that book I wrote standalone like one article at a time and the majority of it was done when I was unemployed um, okay. then I finished the remaining part of the book when I was working uh, which was head spinning a head spinning process um, and so now the second book um, which again because it's through a publisher it takes longer so it won't be out till next year yeah. uh, but I have I'll have a draft done by June and that one it, the process is going to be around my entire life. So all of the craziness with like you, the four children, um, the podcast, the speaking, the work, all the stuff you do, just the work stuff that I'm doing, then I'm having to make sure I squeak out an hour here and 30 minutes here and that there. Uh, but for me, my process has always been, I corral um, like all the information in kind of like a central area. Okay. And then I kind of, copy cut and type 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 copy cut type type and then blend it's so it sounds funny but that's literally my process everybody's is different though i know that yeah. there's one person when i first learned about writing uh, really wanting to focus on writing the first book there was a, a person called um i think it was called the self-publishing school and it's i can't remember his name but he's on social media yeah. and i didn't do his course but i like did, I don't know, did one of his free things or something. And it was all I needed just to get me started. And he talked about writing an entire book in three weeks. 
Yeah. Wow. I didn't that, do that. That's crazy. <laughs> but the process that he talked about, I used some of his process to get me started. For anybody okay. who's out there in the world wanting to write a book, um, you know, from my perspective, that was, I, I had helped me. So it was, I think it's called the self publishing school. I bet you his class is probably pretty amazing. It probably does help. But it was, so, I want to say, like he talked about, you know, you, you put like big pieces of paper on the ground and you just start writing out ideas like a crazy person. And then you take those ideas and you, then you start to do with these other things that like narrow it down. And then after you have that, it like, you create this outline, all of this like super fast. And then you're able to write. And he's like the average book, the best size is between 25,000, 35,000, which is a sweet spot for, for people, for publishing companies right now. That's oh, really? all the bandwidth. It's all the bandwidth people have, of course, unless it's the novel. The novels are, you know, those are just different novels. Yeah. yeah. You know, but for, for the business book, 25 to 35,000 is about all people want. And wow. so, um, yeah, you might. I, I bet you, you probably just read all lanes of books, don't you? I do. <laughs> You're like, I don't care. I don't look at the lane. But they're mo the average person is like, make it pretty short. So I, I knew that my next book would be longer than my first. Okay. And I knew I would have it in many different, like more options again, like audiobooks and just more options getting it out there and yeah, more yeah. national focus. Uh, but I also knew it wasn't going to be like huge, huge, maybe twice the amount, which is still small under 200 pages, probably something like that. I have yeah, to but that's that. a good spot. And lots of times, lots of books that are 50 to 60,000 words, because that's the was the traditional amount of length for a mm -hmm. business book. There's there's a lot of fluff in there, a lot of filler. Well, and it's one thing that was interesting that my publisher told me is. Um, that most people don't read books. So they do what you do, although you go back and finish it if it's good enough, but they do the first and they might do the last. And that may be all they do to come away with like lessons, because if it's written well, you'll have some of those key things yeah. inside the intro, inside the concluding. And so he said that. And then he also said, so people don't read books, just so you know, they read the first chapter, maybe this is the last, and then they're done, which is just head spinning. Because when I read, I actually read the whole thing, but I don't read as often as you. So I mean, that could be what it is, right? Um, and then he said that uh, people actually people don't buy books. So that the idea on that was that the average person, when we go out and we talk and they say they're going to buy books, the average person isn't buying your book. <laughs> Who's buying your book are the corporations that might be um, wanting to buy things like say for their managers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I thought that was interesting. And so the book that I'm writing is more of a pass along book that would be bought by someone in the organization and sent to and given to all their supervisors or above large, you know, or above in the organization. So it's kind of interesting just learning this process from before being a self publisher and uh, really managing the entire process. I mean, I, obviously I had, I had multiple different people. Susan Rooks helped me as my yeah. editor as someone who did my cover at John White helping with marketing. Like I had just different people That's helping, great, but I was ma you know, managing all going, okay, what are we doing guys? But you know, where yeah. are we at? And so now I step back on some of that. I continue to do the Heather thing, which is the marketing PR stuff that I just have to continue. That's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then now there's other people in different, different parts of the team and other authors that I get to get their information and probably, and there'll be people they'll be sending my book out to like you that they'll send them out and say, okay, what do you think? Where, where can she get it better? So it's just kind of cool to have a different spin on things, a different oh, way of doing it. Sounds like it. a really cool process. Sounds like really fun, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, well, we'll see. I mean, after I've done this, we'll see. Do I want to go back to self-publishing, continue to publish? I don't know. You know, I won't, won't really know. But I think it's important. And, I, you know, I keep trying to nudge you to get it done because I think there's so much that can be um, that can be learned through. There's just so many different mediums. We have the podcast, we have this live, we have yeah. our speaking. We have, there's so many different ways that we can do this through courses. And, and so not everybody learns the same way. And that visual thing, like right now, you and I are talking, people are watching, they're visual learners. They're taking in things differently than they would maybe of reading the book or some people yeah, like sure. audio and yeah. just providing that learning that way. And so I think, again, when we think about the leader with heart, you know, again, Mario McCracken, for those who are joining, he was in episode 35, a leadership with heart podcast. And um, I brought him on then because he it does lead with heart. He's very heart focused. Um, and then at the same time, now talking to him is because leaders with heart are always learning. We're, we're learning from other people. We're never too good to learn from the next person. Uh, we are trying to take it in every day. We, we learn from our mistakes. We make plenty of them. And we learn from all of those, those steps in the journey, right? Oh, we for sure. Do. Yeah. And we all learn. Like we talked about not everybody should read right because not everybody sh has to learn that way there's lots of different ways to learn uh, i have a i know lots of people that like to talk to people and just ask questions and they learn much better when it's face to face human interaction so just because people don't read very much doesn't mean they're not learning right there's so many different ways to learn as long as you decide the way you want to learn reading is just one avenue right so mm. yeah there's so many ways you can learn yeah, it's a, it's really true i think about uh i used to go i'm not good at spreadsheets i'm kind of average 
intelligence, IQ, uh, but I love people. And when, when it comes to employees, for example, who I work with a lot on the, the focus groups or with leaders on their surveys, and I'm reading and I like to go out after I read the surveys, I'm going to go to the employees and say, okay, how much, what, what is this that you're saying here exactly? And what does that mean for you? And when I do that, I'm able to you know, read the body language and, and, and hear the size and sense all of the feelings yeah. that are happening and then corral that into kind of a tighter way to give to the leaders who sometimes either just don't have the time, don't get it, don't have that strength. They have the spreadsheet strength, right? They have yeah. the, the process de definition strength and maybe it's just different. And I think the thing, the other message is that we're all so different. So when you, yeah. when you listen on that podcast, for example, uh, one of the one of my listeners is like, I am so blown away by how many people from different industries show up. I mean, you have people from public and private and nonprofit and people that are white and they're black and people that are I mean, like, it's just like all of these people. And and the funny thing is that a lot of the messages end up being similar. And so there's just so much that brings us together in those differences. Right. We oh, have yeah. the differences and there's so many that just, wow, we are a lot alike irrespective yeah. of the industry and the role and whether we're a supervisor and executive, any of those things. There's just a lot of the same challenges. So that's yeah. what I love about kind of the show and, and taking it and putting it into like a written format is not everybody listens to that podcast yeah, that's true. read the book and it's having that same um, spin on things. So what's your, what's your next goal as it relates to being this lifelong learner? You know, you're obviously going to continue to read books. Are there any conferences you're looking to attend? Uh, just, I'm curious to know courses you're taking, anything that might be just along that road of learning. Yeah, so I always attend one or two sales conferences a year because my full-time job is to help companies grow their business. And in my full time, my current full time role at Move Medical, I'm the chief customer officer. So that's sales, marketing, and customer success. And so I really have to stay on top of the stay on top of things when it relates to actually large enterprise business to business sales. So that's kind of the the mm -hmm. place, the space I play in 12, 14 hours a day. Right, that's my real job. Mm -hmm. So I, I always go to sales, a couple of sales conferences a year to just figure stuff out and to meet people and to find out what's new. And those are. Uh, maybe 20% of the books I read have to do with business to business type interactions. Um, so I'm always doing that. Um, as far as other plans, other than those two conferences, I really just find that I can get the most value for my time from reading. So I love podcasts when it's people I feel a connection with or I know. So I listen to your podcast. I listen to Joe Kwan's podcast. I listen to Mark Metry's podcast. There's a few people's podcasts I listen to. But most podcasts I don't listen to because it takes a a while to get to the meat of the stuff. And in, in a chapter in a book, you might find 10 sentences that stuck out. In a podcast, I usually find two to three. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm trying to decide my time, where's the best use of my time, most of the time I'll put on an audiobook over a podcast. And I know lots of people like the other way because they like that human connection. But because my as an extrovert, it, we need to be out there with humans. But to recharge, you need to be alone, right? So there's lots of different things I do to recharge. I listen to books, whereas, but most of the time I need to be out with people and that's how I fulfill my day job. So when I'm not out with people, then I want to recharge and be by myself. And I think the book mm. allows me to be alone with my thoughts. And so that's kind of my focus is usually mm. just to be alone with my own thoughts for a while when 90% of my day is not alone. So the types of books that you read in the business space, I'm curious, do they tend to be ones that uh, kind of ask you to reflect more on the concepts they're presenting um, so that they give you that time or do you just, you, that just who you are. So you're just going to take that time as an, you said as an extrovert, but I'm thinking you meant introvert. You an introvert or an extrovert? So I personally, so an ex, lots of people think introvert and extrovert is actually about how, like how you portray yourself. And, and that's actually not really how it is. It's where you get your source of energy, right? Yes. So I need to be around people. Okay. So I'm an extrovert, but yes. I, if I have a choice of, oh, on a Friday night, am I going to go out with people or be by myself? I'm going to say I'm going to be by myself all the time. I'm going to stay home every night. But yeah. I know that I need to be around people because that's actually how I do my best work and that's how I perform. Hmm. And yep. in each side, you need both. Introverts need time with people and extroverts need time alone. You need both, right? Yes. You just need to find that balance. Yes. And so I am, an, I am an extrovert, but I when I have a choice, I'll always choose to be alone. And so I have to not, I know that that's the wrong choice most of the time though, because I spend so much time with people. Interesting. So. Yeah. I know. I mean, my, my choice will always be to be with people, but I do need to have that quiet time, uh, again, given the fact yeah. that we have four kids. And so it gets, you know, <laughs> we get kind of crazy and loud and I'm like, okay, yeah, so do, you, do you ever get life. time alone is the question, right? Yeah. I, well, and you, again, when they're at school and I, cause I'm, I obviously I work from a home office unless yeah. I'm out with clients or out speaking or something. So that is a good time to get a lot of stuff done. And I get a lot people are like, how does she get so much done? 
you know what? I, when you have a short period of time to get stuff done, you get stuff done. And at least I do. I get stuff done. I'm yeah. known for that. So, and so I was sitting, I was going yesterday. It's so a Super Bowl. I go to get some chicken wings. My kids are like, I can't leave. So I go in there and it is crazy packed inside of this wing stuff. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm looking at what's happening behind the counter. And there are so many people around and they are, the process is failing, very clearly failing. And so I'm sitting there and this lady goes, oh, you, you, I can tell you're someone who actually gets a lot done. And you drive a lot of things forward, don't you? I go, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually could step behind that counter right now and help them out with this whole customer flow. <laughs> just, I'm used to working with customers, so I know how to do that. But it was just kind of funny that she That's said awesome. that. But it's true. Like when we people who get a lot of stuff done can get it done in a very short period of time and they don't need 10 hours to get it done. They can do it in an hour or so, just depending on what they're trying to do. So yeah. uh, I pride myself on that. But at the same time, people like me who are extrovert, who do seek to be with people a lot, uh, and and don't need as much downtime to have the time alone. We can get overwhelmed ourselves. And I'm not extreme extreme extrovert. I'm kind of I'm over the hump for sure, but I'm not way yeah. over on extreme extroversion. Um, so that's true. That was a really good point you made. So look, that was a learning I think for people. I don't know if there's a learning for people who are listening in. That really is uh, when you see people that are sometimes that's how they present, but in the end they actually have to go back to their cup, their little cubby, and kind of recharge in order to be out in the world. There's a really amazing book. Did you ever read Quiet Revolution? Uh -huh, I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and her. Oh my god. I I saw her speak. Oh yeah. At work oh, cool. And I I could not believe it. I was like she is just powerful. I mean, I'm as an extrovert, I just I'm not saying I ever thought an introverted person isn't powerful. But when I saw how she presented and how she talked about her um, the introversion, it, it was just, it was an eye opening experience for me. And I have a lot more, look, most of my best friends are introverts. <laughs> and and um, so with them, they're like, Heather, I need to go back to my hotel room. And I'll be back in a couple hours. And I'm like, oh, really? You're going to leave me? <laughs> I need you. Come here. So it's funny how we all just feed off each other in different yeah. ways, right? What we need. So it's crazy. Let me just make sure I read some more comments. Okay. Um, Carmen, yep, great insight on the process of writing a book, great topic, and agree with Mario on the various approaches to learning. Heather, blessed to have connected with you at many levels. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Rich, okay, we found that book clubs are effective ways to solidify content and concepts of leadership books. We did bite sized book club last month on introversion using Susan Cain's Quiet as a reference, but then applied it to our own environments through group discussion. Very effective way to let material sink in and immediately be useful resources from this event are found at. And then he, he posted it, which I always love that about you, Rich, that you are so willing to share all the stuff that you're doing. And I know that you use mine at some point, which I think is so cool. I love you at called and ask permission. I'm like, of course you can. What? I love that. Um, and then Sam says, if only we can see body language through email. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's uh, yeah, that's funny. We do have to read that. And, and what I, in that case, actually, Sam, one thing I would say, the way to kind of learn the other person, because I do say that I learned them or they learned me, right, yeah. is uh, don't, you know, sometimes if you're able to step away from email and actually walk into their office or pick up the phone, I know that seems old school, but guess what? That's the most effective way to build relationships and to learn other people. So yeah. I would say if you can uh, to do that, to step away from that email, because yeah. emails, can be, even for the ones, some of us who maybe think we're like really good at this, and I know I'm with emails, I'm not great because I'm moving at lightning speed yeah. most days. And so I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. and all of the squishy Heather uh, stuff doesn't appear all the time yeah, yeah. in the emails because you I'm moving so quickly. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Just to be with the person, right? For sure. And then phone calls are a little better and then in person is the best, right? But I've learned yes. a trick that helps with email and texting that has saved me tons and tons of time and tons and tons of problems and has actually saved lot of, quite a few business deals I've been working on. So... Now, when I have to send an email or a text, so lots of the times the, the relationships I'm in with, with our sales process is a two-year sales process from start to finish. So it's a super extremely long sales process. So you yes. really get to know the 10 to 12 decision makers at the companies you're selling into, right? Mm -hmm. And often you don't have time to pick up a phone or you know they're busy and you can't call them and you can't be in person. So you have to send a message, but it might not be a nice message or you might not want them to get your tone wrong. So you don't want them to think you're angry when you're just worried, or you don't want them to think you're worried when you're actually sad. Right. Yes. So there's different emotions. You have to go. So at the beginning of the email, I'll just put tone colon. And then what the tone is, I'll say tone worried. And then I'll, in parentheses, I'll put not angry because it might come across. And so then I'll just write the email and it doesn't matter because then they know the tone. And I do that in texting and I do that in emails now. And it just makes everything go a lot smoother because then they know oh, he's worried. That's why he's saying all this stuff. 
He's oh, not wow. mad. He's not mad at me. He's not angry, but he is worried about the process of what's happening. And so that just makes things a lot easier. You just tell people what to think instead of having them guess what you're thinking, right? You say, hey, oh, I'm sad I love right that. now. I'm angry. Hey, Sam, are you still there? Did you like that? Because that that was actually pretty cool. I, I hadn't really thought about that. I mean, I think to, if I'm in a hurry, that's going to be hard, which happens a lot. But I think sure, there's yeah. times where I'm, I'm sitting like right now on my computer and I can go and say that to begin with is probably is like, I like that. I like that a lot. You're setting, you're choosing a kind of like the idea of people are always watching. You are choosing to set your own tone for what that email is meaning to the other person on the other end. And so otherwise we make people, we could make people just kind of go, Oh, that was like, that was way yeah. off. That was not good. And it's easier than going back and changing the whole email. So you, you write it. And then at the end you just say, okay, what would I want to say? And then you go back to the beginning and put tone. So you don't have to do it at the beginning either. You can write the email first and say, I don't want to have to change this whole email and, and change all the words and make everything sound nice. So I'm just going to go back and say, Hey, I'm, I'm anxious about this because five things were supposed to happen that only two did. So now what are we going to do? Right? So I'm, yes. not, I'm not mad at you. I'm just anxious. So let me know. Let's just figure um, this out. Love that. Look at that. See, I that was see, that's my big nugget from this call today. Right there, it's really it's always right towards the end. It's always that way. So, what are what are there any like last words? I don't know. You would just like to leave for people who are who you think might they're just people who want to be lifelong learners. Do they want to read books? They want to do stuff. You gave us some really good tips related to kind of speeding it up a little bit, yeah. doing audio books, multitasking, like doing it when you're driving or when you're working out. Um, but are, is there anything that's maybe overarching, kind of the importance of learning that you might want to leave uh, everybody who's listening with now? Um, it's kind of cliche, but you have to actually like what you're listening to, kind of. I know you you might not. So I started to fall in love with reading when I was in fifth grade. So before that, I was always in the worst reading group in my class. I was always behind. I was always from first through fifth grade or so. I was always behind. I was always below average marks. There were times when they didn't want to pass me to the next grade because I wasn't good enough in reading, whereas <laughs> other stuff, I was fine. But then... I really like sports. And then when I found out you could actually read about sports, I was like, oh, this is a no brainer then. So in fifth grade, I started reading, I read a, a, a biography about the steel curtain, which is what they call the Steelers defensive line. Or they, because like the iron curtain, it was a play on yes. words from the, yes. the 1970s Pittsburgh Steelers. And I read a book about the steel curtain and I'm like, wow, this is really fascinating. And I learned about each of the, the four defensive linemen that were like the NFL all pros and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And so then I read, started reading other sports books and I started reading Magic Johnson's biography and then about Wilt Chamberlain and about all these other athletes. And then I read Vince Lombardi's biography. And that's when I, I'm like, wow, there's all this awesome stuff I could learn about sports without actually just sitting and watching TV. And my mom's happy now that I'm reading and she, I'm not watching TV and I like it. So that's when it kind of switched. So if you like something, study about it, and then that'll open the doors to study about other things too. Mm. Oh, I love that. And, and for everybody who's watching, wow, can you just see the all that energy and passion that Mark, you can just, like, that makes me want to go learn right there. Makes me want to go read, makes me want to learn. I'm going to listen to my book while I'm doing this other thing here because you just inspired me to do that. So Mario McCracken, episode 35 of the Leadership of the Heart podcast. You guys go back and listen to our conversation. It wasn't necessarily related to this, but some other things being a leader. And uh, he's a leader in his own right with the title and without a title. Doesn't really matter. This this is, um, has been great. And I definitely appreciate you taking the time to yeah. share all these great things with us that we can go use now, too. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. Really looking forward to your book, Caring Leadership. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. Oh, I'm super excited. I really am. So, all right, guys. See you later. See you next time.